this is the Sports Timeout Podcast with Tony Caranco and your host, Wes Underwood. It's that time again, everyone. Welcome to the Sports Timeout Podcast brought to you by Blondie's Woodfire Wheelhouse Food Truck and Crackman Cajun Seafood House in Joplin. Find them on Facebook. Just search for Blondie's Woodfire Wheelhouse Food Truck if you're in the mood for some good pizza. Or Kraken Cajun Seafood House if you're looking for some fresh Cajun. Wes Underwood flying solo this week here at Jefferson's recording the podcast. And man, I love the atmosphere here. Come see Billy and his crew anytime this week and through the weekend. I'm sure they'll be able to help you and your family during this holiday season as well. So come check them out and get some of these wings here at Jefferson's. We'll start in the NBA and... Did you watch that fight that almost happened with LeBron? He bloodied up Stewart by throwing an elbow and then refuses to fight him. One, that should have been extra free throws, by the way. And two, should have been an ejection from a flagrant foul. And number three, at least, a suspension for LeBron. Now, yes, he gets that suspension for one game, but, I mean, is that really justice? He had an elbow straight to the face of Stewart. And Stewart would have kept going, but he ended up finally getting escorted off and even attempted to go while getting escorted off. And I believe Stewart had every right to do so. Should he have stopped after his second escort back from LeBron? Of course, yes. Do I agree with him getting his punishment of two games? Yes. But I still believe that LeBron should have had a longer one than him. Not to mention, I believe LeBron should be owing some money for that. I mean, you made a guy bleed. You made a guy bleed. Come on. What's going on here, NBA? Who cares if it's LeBron's first? He should be treated like everybody else. You shouldn't give him any of that special treatment for being tenured in the NBA. You shouldn't. I don't know. I don't think they really care about the discipline in the NBA as much as they do as all the other sports. I think that's one of the things that the NBA lacks is discipline on players who do things like that. Some guys just get fouled a few bucks here and there, and then some guys get eliminated from the team and have to sit for quite a while. So I think this should be one of those ones where LeBron gets eliminated for a little bit, sits out maybe four or five games, and then owes about two or four million dollars on top of that, just to make the point clear that he can't get away with what he wants to. I mean, come on. I don't care if it's LeBron. He's a great player, but stuff like this, that's petty. That's really petty. You were getting beat in the game, and you saw it. You saw him getting beat by Stewart, and Stewart was going to get to that ball, but elbows from LeBron. Elbows from LeBron. That's his Christmas present, I guess. A black eye and bloodied and an elbow from LeBron. I don't know. It's crazy. Crazy. Next in the NBA, we talk Mello. No, not Mello Ball, but the original Mello, Carmelo Anthony. The dude is still a stud. 18 points in his fill-in the other night for James. I think he needs to be in the rotation and not just a bench guy. I really do. I mean, he put up 18 respectfully. I think he served his time. I think he took enough time off to recalculate himself and get himself back into the game. I really do. I really, really loved Carmelo Anthony when I was younger. Yeah, I'm only 30 almost, but Carmelo Anthony has been fun to watch since college. I mean... You got a candy bar named after you, so you must have done something right in your career. So, Carmelo Anthony, go you, man. Go you. You do you. You do you. Because I really do believe that you should be not only in that starting rotation. You have plenty of talent. You do everything you can to help when you come into the game. But I think that was a statement game for you, too. I really do. So, kudos to you. Good job. Really, really appreciate your work ethic and your passion to keep driving for this sport. You love it. That's what you like to do, and I'm glad to see that. So keep fighting, man. Keep fighting. To the NFL we go, and we bring in former Chiefs tight end from 2000 to 2007, Mr. Jason Dunn. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Not too bad. Uh, ready for some uh, playoff football. I'm, I'm kind of getting bored of this regular season football. It, it always happens about this time. So Right, right. <laughs> and uh, so boring football. I mean, it's kind of gotten more amped up for the Chiefs as they've won four in a row now. And everyone pretty much back from injury. And, you know, being a former player and having a similar team with 
the guys around you and Gonzalez and Green and Holmes and just almost a complete offense. I mean, pretty much back in that day, you guys were. I mean, you were big and bad. And you have a week like this, and it comes at this point in the season. I'm sure you guys had it like that. What what goes through your mind when you have that week off with only a few weeks left in the season and with division opponents ahead? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. You know, it's always – anytime you're able to have that bye week, uh, going into the bye week with a win, uh, that that is is a plus. Um, you know, you go in without, you know, licking your wounds, thinking about what you didn't get right, uh, things that, you know, you didn't do and, and why you lost the game and just having that somber feel. Yeah. So them just, you know, getting the win uh, was was incredible for one, but also two, uh, you know, usually during this bye week and having this off week, and, and here's, here's probably the greatest thing is, it's during the Thanksgiving holiday. Yeah. You know, so that in itself is, is a bonus. Um, and, and, and a lot of it is because when you're playing, people don't quite know this, but a lot of those, the holidays, we don't really have a chance to enjoy like everybody else. Yeah. You know, and usually like we have, uh, like on Thanksgiving, usually that day, usually practice Thanksgiving day, you get like half a day and then half a day, you know, we go to facilities, watch film or go through a quick little walkthrough and whatnot. And, you know, we kind of try to get ready and get prepared, especially for we're playing. But this having the significance of getting the win, being Thanksgiving and the bye week is is key. Because now all you can do is just sit down and enjoy your family, relax, kick your feet up, and just watch some, some football. Yeah. So I know Andy, them, he's going to those guys off as they should, well-deserved uh, time, uh, to just kind of get their mind right, reassess where they are uh, right now in the season, and kind of project where they want to go. So this is good for just, you know, not just the coaches, but players in general. Yeah, and I totally agree there. And, I mean, we kind of go back here, though. Four out of these last six games are going to be against division opponents. And they still have a shot at the number one seed in this crazy AFC race. And I mentioned those four opponents. I mean, you get the Broncos right after, then the Raiders, then the Chargers. And then you finish out the season with the Broncos. I mean, you kind of got to sit back and just, yeah, as you mentioned it, relax with your family, but kind of do some game preparation too. And as much as you can, just sit back and watch these games this week. I mean, definitely the Raiders, I mean, they're going to be on Thanksgiving Day and that that's going to be a game for the Chiefs to watch and just kind of see what kind of new tricks that they've got up their sleeves and stuff like that. I mean, that that's kind of an advantage is you kind of pointed out there too. It's a pretty tough task to win the AFC West and you've been in that situation before as well. And I, do you, do you focus on the division at hand or do you just go a game at a time? Uh, so, uh, you know, the first thing, like you said, you, you know, you gotta, you know, take advantage of being able to see, you know, your teams that, that you're going to be playing in the next couple of weeks, uh, playing right now where they are. And we know that with the Raiders, us beating them out there, uh, when they come in, they're going to be ready. It's, it's always like that, that one, either tip or tad, or, you know, they're going to be looking for that revenge game, yeah. uh, if you will, uh, maybe bring it back up. But, I, you know, I, I see right now they're just kind of flailing at the moment with, mm. uh, with uh, the Raiders. It'd be good to see where they are on Thursday, see if, you know, if they still uh, dealing with all the, 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 the problems and the issues that, you know, they've been going through for the past couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Especially take that one lump for us, so uh, that'd be good. I look at it like this: you always try to concentrate on the very next game, and it's just one game at a time. Mm-hmm. And if you take it uh, with that regard, then you should be fine. It, it, the, the the schedule and everything else, and the wins should take care of themselves because you, you could just control the things that you could control for that one game. And yeah. like I said, if you continue to accumulate win after win after win. You'll find yourself in the playoffs. you find yourself winning the division, which I think is one of the best in football. Uh, and, you know, you'll you'll be where you want to get to, which is the Super Bowl. The yeah. ultimate goal everybody wants to be at. Uh, and so I think now, especially, you know, during this time, when you're looking at all these divisional opponents toward the end of the season, which you play two times a year, mm-hmm. uh, you don't play the Chargers, you don't play uh, the Raiders, so you kind of know what you're, you're dealing with, what they're throwing at you, what you didn't get right the first time, and then you can make that assessment. But down the Broncos, which beat Dallas uh, a couple weeks back, uh, what type of team they are. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that, you know, 
the Broncos are a dangerous team. They're one of those teams like you just sleep on. It's like, oh, look, they don't really have a whole lot of pieces out there. Just lost Von Miller. You know, guys have kind of been hurt for them. Um, you know, so you don't quite know what you're going to get, or at least what you're expecting. And so before you know it, here's Teddy Bridgewater and his crew coming <laughs> in, and, you know, really. They're, and, and they're, you know, making a game out of it. I mean, does that does that kind of remind you of the Brian Greasy time with you guys and just coming off of Elway and then all of a sudden Brian comes in and then you got a little bit of Jay Cutler controversy during that time frame as well. And, I mean, just seeing those two go and you never know what game you were going to get out of them, but you knew you were going to get a game. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, and, and, and <laughs> you know, playing Denver is always tough. And it's always tougher playing them out there. Yeah. It always has been. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, the elevation, uh, but just dealing with the crowd, you know, with the horse used to run around. I don't know if they still run the horse or not, but I'm sure they, they probably are every once in a while. <laughs> but, you know, hey, they, what Greasy was able to do, you know, uh, uh, and those guys, uh, they, they would always make a game. That, those guys were, you know, decent quarterbacks, but they yeah. had a good team. They had a good defense. I always was known for a good defense. Yes. I uh, always have some pieces with guys uh, offensively. So, you know, you always had to contend with that every single year and twice a year. So it's always a challenge, you know, playing Denver and thinking of where they are because you know they're always going to make a game out of it. And yep. It just seems to me, you know, even though, like, I look at it like our, our nemesis is the Raiders, without a doubt, in the division. The Broncos always wanted to be that one, right? It's like, hey, you know, look, <laughs> you need to be looking at us to be as opposed to the Raiders, you know, being up top. Yeah. You know, like, we the ones that look at you all as being – you know, our nemesis as opposed to the Raiders. So, um, I don't know, maybe some jealousy there as far as like, <laughs> hey, you don't like, you don't hate us as much as you hate the Raiders. I don't know, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what Denver gives you every single year. You know, they're going to be ready. John yeah. Elway's always going to have them ready. You know, oh, yeah. people in peace in places, uh, you know, to come out there and make it a game. So indeed. And, uh, well, hard questions out of the way now. So, Next up, mm-hmm. what what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Well, I, I tell you what, I'm just I'm, I'm you know I'm thankful uh, for one uh, just for my family. Uh, that is that is you know just being extremely important to me. Just my uh, uh, my support. Uh, thankful for my faith. You know I'm, I'm you know I'm one that I, I wear my faith uh, on my sleeve, and I love that. You know, I'm just a God fearing man, and God has been so good to me, has just been blessing me immensely. Yeah. Uh, I could just be more thankful enough for what He's just done for me in my life, uh, but the people around me in their lives as well. And so, uh, thankful for, you know, my friends. Um, I, I, you know, I just, I'm just so thankful. I'm just a thankful person, you know, just showing that gratitude uh, of where we are. And, 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 you know, I always come out and I just try to pray for everybody the country and us just getting together as people and loving one another better than what we have been doing. And so I'm just thankful that maybe more people are getting that mindset and getting past all the silliness and the craziness of the division of things and want to talk to one another, right? And trying to get together, trying to understand each other uh, a, a lot better while we all on this plane of existence, while we here on this planet with each other, trying to work together. Yeah. So, uh, well said. I'm, I'm thankful for this, that, and good people you know, that's trying to do those things that, and like I said, my situation that I'm in, you know, every day that I'm just waking up, I just had a birthday, uh, last Monday. So I'm thankful for another year. I've seen another year of my life. You know, God's been good. God's been good. It's good to hear. That's great. Mm-hmm. And, uh, next up also want to get your, uh, Turkey day predictions. And, uh, well, first up Dallas okay. comes back home after a tough loss, uh, to Kansas city and they're going to play the Raiders. We just kind of briefly talked about that. So who you got here? You know what? I I have to go with Dallas. Okay. I have to go with Dallas. And I, and I think uh, Jerry Jones is thinking, like, what the heck has been going on? <laughs> uh, we need to get us a win right now. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if we want to get back on this train of this, you know, everybody pushing for us to, you know, go to the Super Bowl and maybe be in a real team. Uh, you know, I think they lost that in the past few years, past few weeks. And I think that's your turn is, is kind of being uh, sullied a little bit because of the Chiefs' loss and, of course, the Broncos' loss. Uh, so it hadn't been like the, the, the welcoming back as he, he thought it would be. Yeah. So 
Uh, I'm looking for Dallas, man. I okay. think Dallas is going to, you know, he'll they'll be a team to contend with. Yeah, uh, I got they'll you. have a couple of their pieces back. Yep. Uh, but I think they'll be hungry. Like they they need this win. This is a win that they definitely uh, and and really uh, desperately need. So Dallas is on my pick for this one. Okay, I think I'm in agreement there for sure. Yeah. Then next up, Bears head to Detroit. Who comes out on top here? Okay, Bears and Detroit. <laughs> now this is this is a very interesting one. Very interesting. Uh, so you, you you lose Justin Fields. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be down for a few weeks. Um, I think Detroit they lost uh, Jared Goff, right? I believe so. Yeah, they did. So he's he he's down with it. I yeah, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my money, and my prediction on the Bears. Okay. And I think that the Bears, defensively, they still have a, a, a pretty good defensive team. Yeah. Uh, offensively, they got some pieces. And I think that, you know, I see Marquise Goodwin, he's been doing uh, pretty good coming back. And I think Andy Dalton, you know, Andy, he'll come in and he'll, you know, the uh, he'll, he'll throw a couple bullets. I forgot what he's called, Andy. The, the Red Raider or something. What, what he, something like that he's calling. Maybe the Red Rifle. Red, Red rifle, yeah. So I think he's going to rifle some 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 balls out to some receivers yeah. this this Thursday. So I, I'm going with the Bears, man. And then Jared Goff, I, I think Detroit, man, is just it's just one of those teams that just you just can't get right. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is, <laughs> man. Some just hanging over their head after Barry Sanders left. Yeah, you know, I, I was I played when you know his last year, and I, I was able to see him play, and that curse that Barry to put up on the team or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, I think you're still going to keep Ellen until they do right by him, but saying with an apology or whatever. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's true. Yeah, so that I that think, yeah, the Bears I mean, that really has to be the answer up there because they've they've done a lot of good and still, I mean, even with Megatron, and you can't win a Super right. Bowl. Yes, right, right. They, they still can't win it, man. They still can't win it. Yeah, so I think it's going to take Barry to come back. And, you know, like I said, make amends and you know get some things changed around there. Make make him, shoot, I don't know, ambassador or, or whatever. Yeah, but something you got. You got to you got to get very uh, more involved up there in Detroit. Uh, and I think they'll kind of get out of that little slump they've been going through for the past twenty years. Yep. just about. So, and then lastly, we have the Saints. They play host to the Bills in uh, kind of the nightcap game. So, who you got here? Ooh, okay. So I'm pushing for the Saints. Obviously, yeah. I you know I got to go with the Saints. Okay. okay. One, I, I got their defense on on fantasy. For one. <laughs> yes. Uh, and two, you know, I, you know, I, I want the Bills to keep getting beat. Yes. Uh, you know, every chance, man. I, I just don't. I don't want to see these guys be in the playoffs. You know, coming back and having it. I mean, they got a great coach. They got a great quarterback. They got some good receivers. Indeed. Uh, decent defense. Uh, so. You know, I just want the, the Saints to keep them losing if they can. Uh, and so uh, my money's on the Saints right now. Okay. Uh, the Bills, it's tough up there, but I'm, I'm pushing for New Orleans to win. Let yeah. Me put it this way. I'm pushing for New Orleans to win, but I believe the Bills may edge them out in this. Okay. okay. I'll uh, I'll go with the Saints on this one. Everything okay. I like everything you say, but I mean, yeah, the Bills could, but I, I like the Saints to pull it out here. I like them too, man. I, you know, I don't know. Trevor Simeon, is he? No. So that's that's well, my question. My we'll question. find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. So. Well, uh, it's a pleasure having you on this week, and I uh, hope you have a great and safe Thanksgiving. Thank you, Wesley, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, not a problem. And lastly, we'll go ahead and talk Taysom Hill getting a huge deal. Four-year extension with the base of it being $40 million. If all goes okay, and the max of it, which is based off of other performance things that happen and whatnot. So it could get him a max of $95 million over the next four years, but $22.5 million of it goes to him straight in his pocket. Is it crazy? Yeah, but it, it's the right move. He is a threat to anyone else who signs him and anybody else that is in the league that needs a dual-threat guy like that. I mean, he can throw, he can run, he can 
do whatever you want him to do on offense. He can be a receiver. I mean, the guy's insane. He's 31 years old, yeah, but he is a weapon on the offense, and I think they did the right move in securing it and locking him into that deal. Yeah, it's a little obscure on the price range, but to retain a guy like that and make sure he doesn't go anywhere else, smart move, Saints. I really believe so. I really do. And we now head into the two-minute warning brought to you by 4th Street Bull and Joplin. Go see Will and his crew and check out the upgrades as well. And we will now talk Friday Night Lights and, uh, well, local matchups as well in the basketball side. And, um, yeah, Webb City is going to play host to Jackson on Saturday night this week. And a uh, hard-fought game last week again. The Fighting Indians, though, are coming in from Jackson at 12-0. It's going to be a fun semifinal. There's no doubt about that. Do I believe that Rod and his team can get things done yet again and make it to another state championship? I do. I really do. Unless if there's just a lack of mentalness there after Thanksgiving and everybody taking Turkey Day off and celebrating with their families, I I really think that Coach Rod gets things done. And next we have high school girls basketball coach from Joplin, and we bring in Coach Floyd. How are you, sir? I'm doing really well. How about yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad. Ready for this uh, Thanksgiving break this week? Yeah, it's it's uh, coming at a good time for us, I think. <laughs> also, uh, good things coming this year as well. Uh, congrats on the 2-0 start. Oh, thank you. Girls are, are playing really well right now. We're off to, to a good start, so I'm excited to uh, get, get going after Thanksgiving again. <laughs> yes, and uh, you talk about that. Last year started off hot as well, and then you lose Ella to her knee injury, and a lot of people thought the season was over as other players ended up getting hurt along the way as well. But really, I mean, you guys fought through most of those games and were in them for the most part. How, how do you look to improve this season, and what are your expectations as of now? Well, like you mentioned, having a healthy Ella helps us immensely. Uh, but just the experience that we bring back should help us quite a bit, just knowing how to close out games. Like, for example, last night when we were at East Newton, we were down 11 at halftime. And, um, you know, in the past, I think we may have just folded and, and conceded the loss, but the girls battled back. And by the end of the third quarter, we're up and um, pulled away late to, to win by – ended up being five, but we were up 10 with a little over a minute to go. So um, just having that experience and leadership – uh, that we gained last year is going to be huge, hopefully paying off dividends this year. And you mentioned that core. Uh, your daughters are involved in that. How is it as a dad to see your daughters be such a big part of this team? Uh, it, it's it's really fun. Uh, I, I enjoy coaching them. Um, they've grown up in a gym. You know, From the time Emma, she's a senior this year, from the time she's a baby, uh, she was sitting in a pumpkin seat at my practices. So <laughs> um, they, they don't know anything other than basketball. So... So for them, you know, I, I'm very happy for their success uh, being a coach's kid. Yeah. Uh, I think it's good a lot of the time for them. Uh, sometimes they catch a lot of flack just because they're my kids and, and don't necessarily get the credit they deserve on their own. But i um, just extremely proud of them and, and the girls that they're turning out to be. It's amazing. That's awesome to hear. And uh, what is one thing you look forward to doing with your family over this break? And then also, what is one thing you look forward to? over this whole break before the season gets into full swing? <laughs> uh, my entire family is coming to my sisters, uh, all of my siblings, uh, my mom and her husband, my dad and his wife. We're all getting together at my sisters over Thanksgiving. Okay. So that'll, that'll be pretty exciting because that rarely ever happens, maybe once every three or four years. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to that. And, and the, just having a little bit of time off before we really – really hit the ground running we come back from thanksgiving we go back to back tournaments and uh play two games uh, i believe the weekend up to the christmas so um you know we're coming back hitting the ground running so just having a couple days to catch our breath you know we've we've been practicing three weeks now we've got a couple games under our belt so we're we're coming at a good time where we can just take a couple days off re-energize and come back refocused and ready to go and for the fans listening um where can we catch the next tournament? Carl Junction, correct. And what day should that start? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. The Carl Junction tournament starts Monday. We play the 4 o'clock game. Okay. And then it's going to be played Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. All right. Awesome. Well, congratulations on your good start and continue to hope for a safe and healthy 
player season as well, and as well as coaches too. I mean, COVID's still a thing, so we, we got to look out for everyone here. Yeah, uh, it's just a new world we live in, but I, I appreciate the well wishes. Not a problem. Thanks for joining us. All right, well, thank you. And look out for more girls and boys basketball heading into next month. A lot of early tournaments and such will be happening over the next week as well, so pay attention to the team's social media pages for more information. And with high school football and basketball out of the way, we will do the local sports update brought to you by Jefferson's, where uh, you can go see Billy and his crew for happy hour during the week. And uh, not to mention, Monday through Friday at 3 to 6 p.m. as well, you can get $1 half-order fried pickles or craft bottles and whatnot and $1.75 on the oysters for a limited time only on that one. That, that sounds like a good idea right there. Oysters, that, that could be really, really good if you're into that kind of stuff. So, you know, $1.75, you can't beat that. You can't beat that at all. So, uh, yeah, go see Billy and his crew today. And with high school football and basketball out of the way, next up we have local college sports, and the MSSU men's basketball team will play host to John Brown University this Saturday. Tip is just after the women's game concludes, and then Pitt State men, they will hit the road today as they head to Henderson State as Tip is set for 2 p.m. and will return home Saturday to play Baker University at 3.30 p.m. As for the women's basketball for Missouri Southern, they are 1-2 and two currently, and they will play host to Oklahoma Panhandle on Saturday as tip is set for 1.30 p.m. And then for the Pitt State ladies, they are off to a good start as well, and they will play at home tonight at 5.30 p.m. against Lindenwood. And then on Saturday, they will also play host to Missouri S&T as tip is set for 1.30 p.m. And, well, that's all I got. So if you want to go catch one of those games this weekend, Go for it. I I encourage you guys to go out to the D2 atmosphere. It is fun. And each of these stadiums brings their own elements to the games. And men's and women's sports at Missouri Southern and Pitt State have been awesome to watch. So don't forget, of course, all of these games and events are pending to weather and the current and fluid COVID-19 situation. Well, the music is here. And it's the end of another episode for Tony and myself. Have a great and safe weekend as well as the rest of this week. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Enjoy your families. And uh, we'll tune in next week on the Sports Time Out podcast as we will be talking to Webb City basketball coach for the boys, Coach Horn. And uh, he'll give us some insight on the Webb City season as well. So take care and uh, stay safe.